Well, hello everybody. I'm here with Norman Traversi and uh, we're downtown Ottawa um, doing a protest. There's a bunch of people here doing a protest and I got the pleasure of finding you on YouTube and listening to your story and all the wonderful work that you're doing. Um, I have to say I'm really impressed and I, I'm, uh, it's a pleasure to meet you and be nice here and have this, this discussion. Yes, Thank you. you're welcome. So could you maybe just do a little brief introduction of what who you are and what it is that you're doing here, what brought you to do this protest? Yeah, uh, I'm an ex-firefighter, Mississauga firefighter, uh, injured, I guess spinal injuries, uh, PTSD, whatever most firefighters end up with. And I now live in Ottawa. And last August, I saw Brenda Lucky, the newly christened uh, commissioner of the RCMP, in her best red serge uniform saluting and while she was saluting Justin Trudeau walked up to her and gave her a hug and a kiss on both cheeks and I thought what contempt that man has for that person and for the office that she holds like would you dream of doing that with a man and it, it, it no. just it, yeah. I blew a gasket so then I thought, look at all this SNC-Lavalin stuff going on. He fired his attorney general for not knuckling under, who also happens to be a woman. He has utter contempt for women, I think. And I thought, if they won't deal with this SNC-Lavalin corruption, I will. And I'm just a firefighter. I've got no legal training. Well, I do now. I train myself. So. <laughs> Anyhow, I filed a, what's called a private prosecution. And that is something that is in the criminal code. I think it's number 507 of the criminal code, but you can fact check me on that. And it's in the criminal code that if the police will not act on a crime, then a civilian has the right to do so. And it's called a private prosecution. So I put one together and I charged Justin Trudeau with uh, corruption and conspiracy to corrupt, which means he got Gerald Butts and all his buddies to also intimidate uh, Jody Wilson-Raybould. I went to uh, the Ottawa courthouse uh, late August, and I plunked that down in front of a Justice of the Peace. And he looked at it, and he looked at me, and he says, uh, go have a coffee for a half hour. Obviously, I gotta have a meeting. So I came back. And he said, do you swear that everything in this document is true to the best of your knowledge? And I swore in a Bible that it was true. He said, you're going to have a pre oncot hearing in eight days. I believe it was September the 4th. So uh, eight days later, I had paid thousands of dollars to have a witness, Gary McHale, who is the leading expert on private prosecutions. He uh, was successful in his prosecution against the Attorney General of Ontario and against the Commissioner of the OPP, uh, Fantino. So I paid for him to come out and put him up in a hotel for, what, two nights, I think? And he coached me on what to say and how to act and, you know, so I wouldn't screw up. And that was pretty intense. And then we showed up that morning and they said, oh, the judge is sick. Mm -hmm. They only had one judge in Ottawa, I guess, right? No, no extra judges at the <laughs> Ottawa courthouse. Then they said, come back October 7th. So once again, Gary went back to where he lives, which is like six, seven hour drive. And uh, I brought him back again and put him up again at, at considerable expense. And uh, we were scheduled for 9.30 uh, courtroom 14 in uh, the Ottawa courthouse. And I showed up with uh, Gary. We had a great big box full of over 200 documents, uh, evidence to the, what had happened with the SNC-Lavalin affair. Uh, I had uh, a dozen thumb drives with uh, recordings of the phone calls made to Jody Wilson-Raybould all the evidence necessary to prove corruption. And I had, besides that, I had uh, four other people with me uh, for moral support, uh, witnesses, to witness what was happening. And we showed up at nine o'clock for a 9.30 hearing. 
And uh, my name and Trudeau's name was not on the docket at the front desk as it should have been. It, we were scheduled room 14. We went to room 14. My name wasn't there either. I was scheduled to be there. And the door was locked. So I'm knocking on the door. It's locked. We figured, okay. I kept knocking on that door uh, till around 10 o'clock. And I wasn't hammering on the door. I was politely knocking. They couldn't have helped but hear me. And uh, it remained locked. At 10 o'clock, the door opened. We went in. Another group of people went in. And for some reason, the clerk knew who I was. I don't know how. And he said, you th people are going to have to leave. This is another matter. So we left and we waited outside. A while later, a woman in a business suit carrying a bunch of books, so I figured she was a lawyer, uh, came out and I said, do you know anything about the Traversy Trudeau matter? And she said, that was dealt with first thing this morning. And it was stayed. And I said, do you know why? And she says, I don't, you'll have to ask the Crown Attorney. And uh, anyways, uh, we, we finally got the door open. The room was empty. They'd gone out a back door. I've got a friend at the courthouse who is a transcription person, and she said she can get me any transcription for free as long as I don't release her name. So I had that transcription the same day. And at 9.30, they commenced the proceedings, and it was over by 9.36, and it was stayed for lack of evidence using the McHale principle, which is a Supreme Court principle, and it's named after Gary McHale, and they stayed it for lack of evidence. Well, I had Gary McHale standing next to me with the evidence, so obviously it was not lack of evidence. They did this because the election was in 10 days or so, and they locked me out of the courtroom, held the proceeding without me. That is an obstruction of justice. I'm going to deal with that. Uh, it's also a criminal act. Uh, I went to the uh, Human Rights Commission in Canada. They won't deal with it. I went to the federal court for a writ of mandamus, which means do your job. One court telling another court to do their job. Mm -hmm. They said it's not their jurisdiction. I'm now looking at... So you're getting the runaround. Oh, big time, big time. Uh, I went to Elections Canada, and I said, this is rigging the election because if I would have had my hearing, mm. Trudeau would have lost. Mm -hmm. lost. They won't deal with it. Mm -hmm. Everyone's scared of this man, except for me and you, I guess. But uh, now I'm, I'm looking at going to a Quebec court and filing there and just see if they'll deal with it and also going to the Superior Court of Ontario, which is one up from the Court of Justice, and filing there. So uh, it's now been more than six months since this happened. So I can file again without it being looking uh, vexatious. So they, they can't say it's vexatious. I've waited the six months. It's not going away. I'm not going to drop this no matter what. So Good for you. No, I, I commend you on what you're doing, and it's bravery, and it's courage, and it's standing up for your rights. And these are the, standing again, up for everybody's everyone's rights. rights. Yeah. And you're representing, and we need more people like you, more people supporting you. This is, you know, our human rights are so important, and this is something that I advocate a lot about. And we have to know better what our human rights are, which I'm learning. You know a lot about that yeah. as Can our Canadian rights. So, um, where can people start if they want to start looking into what what their rights are and, and if they want to do something, what can you well, say? Well, it's that? all online. You can. Your rights. Um, Ayn Rand, who's a hero of mine, she said, "You are born with all your rights. No one can give you a right. You're born with them already, but they can take them away." Correct. So you have all your rights. They're God-given rights, and they can be taken away. And it's up to you to defend your rights. And Edmund Burke in the 18th century said the only thing necessary for evil to profit is for good men to do nothing. So if you don't uphold my rights and your rights, if you don't uphold our rights, then you are on the side of evil <laughs> by doing nothing. Yeah. You can't, um, silence in itself is a statement. I agree. Right? Yeah, I agree with that. Um, so, and 
from today's, for instance, like you can see there's people protesting here at the Hill. It's quite a crowd. It is quite a crowd uh, and the weather turned out well for us too, thank goodness. Um, what do we hope to achieve today? And, and I guess there is another one coming July 1st. That's the big one, correct? The big one on July 1st. I've, I've got a network of thousands of people now that we were a network. So it's not just me down. It's all of us networked like a spider web. And what the plan is, is that we are going to have a couple of retired RCMP officers or more if necessary, write a couple of briefs about the corruption that's going on in Canada. And they're gonna make sure it's done properly, correctly, like a police document that you would take to a court to charge someone. Mm -hmm. And uh, on July 1st, we're gonna meet here, even though Trudeau says we can't, we're gonna meet here, it's our land, our property. And then we're all going to march to the American Embassy around the corner here. Mm -hmm and we are going to have a representative of the embassy meet us at the front door and we're going to hand over those briefs because on july 1st the usmca comes into effect that's united states mexico and canada it's our replacement to the free trade agreement okay that comes into effect on july 1st section 27.5 of the USMCA, look it up, uh, states that you can, they cannot deal with a country that has corruption and that they are obliged to investigate any allegations of corruption, which means that when we deliver those briefs about the corruption in Canada, the money laundering, the human trafficking, which is rampant in this country, mm -hmm, mm -hmm. they are obliged to investigate. So we're going to have the FBI and the Mexican police after Trudeau's ass, because our RCMP won't do it. So that's the plan for July 1st. Wow, that's some, that's some big stuff. That's big stuff. That's big stuff. If I if I live that long, <laughs> <laughs> but someone else will do it. Right. Someone else. Well, will we do certainly it. are in unprecedented times right we now. We are. And so, you know, the, yeah. when's the last time Parliament was suspended? Well, I couldn't you know, tell you. The, well, it, it would be uh, a 1641. Wow. Uh, around then, and the king suspended parliament, and they chopped his head off. Wow, that's... That's the English Civil they War. They weren't fooling around. You don't mess around with parliament. <laughs> no. Well, he does. Okay. And uh, the people we have now, they don't seem to care, but I care. Yeah. I've got three daughters. Yep. I want to have grandchildren. Yep. And I don't want my daughters and my grandchildren living in a country like this. Agreed. So Agreed. that's that's my goal in life. Uh, I'm not making any money doing this. Right. It's costing me money, but uh, I'm not giving up. And I've got a number of people. You know, I've got I've got a private investigator out west, and she says I'm just a grandmother, but I don't want my grandkids to have this. And I got someone else saying that uh, she wants to be able to tell her grandkids what she did. And you know, I've got I've got a two-star general down in the States who meets with Trump regularly, who talks to me about this stuff. Um, I've got some family members that uh, of, of uh, the president that uh, are also aware of what's going on. Mm -hmm. So this is very real, very yeah, real. Is. Yeah. It and is. this is the it's real not, world. It's not a stunt. Yeah. No. Yeah. No. How interesting. I, I Oh, that day yep. in the courtroom uh, when I was locked out, uh, a well-dressed woman in a business suit, who I didn't know, walked up to me and she pointed her finger at me and said, you know they're going to kill you. She, was that and a threat? Walked, and then she walked away. An indirect away. threat. Hmm. Then she walked away. Wow. And how did they know me when I walked into that courtroom? Right. I went to uh, court services to uh, get some documents. This is later, a few weeks later. And the woman at the counter, who I'd never met before, said, Hi, Norman, what, what can I do for you? So was that some sort of psychological That's intimidation? A, no, I, I just thought it was bizarre. Yeah. Then I went back another time, and another woman said, Hi, Norman, uh, what can I help you with? And I said, How is it you know my name? And she said, Everyone in this building has seen your interviews. Yeah. So that's effective. That's effective. I was in Loblaws here in Ottawa 
I'm in the checkout line. This is before this f phony COVID thing. And I'm in the checkout line and the checkout lady says, uh, are you the nice gentleman that's taking Justin Trudeau to court? <laughs> and I said, I am indeed. And she shook my hand and thanked me. So, and this, this has happened to me quite a bit. Wow, how interesting. Yeah. How interesting. Yeah. Well, I would love to do another follow interview with you. Anytime. I would really appreciate that. And it's just for the viewers and, and just to spread, you know, share yeah. information. I think to share information on all perspectives is very important before we make decisions and to inform ourselves, right? Yeah. So I have a question for you yes, before we end this. I'm, I work in the blockchain, Bitcoin, cryptocurrency space. And what do you know about that? Or any, any interest or any, any knowledge? I'll tell you. Yes. I'll tell you. I know a, a, a fellow that uh, he came up to meet me with three other people. And he wants to bring down Canada. Do you know about him? Who's him? Uh, I'll tell you after, off <laughs> camera. I'll okay, tell you. okay. He, uh, He's a computer genius, and he has designed what he calls a new Canada. Canada. He's trademarked that uh, title, New Canada. And uh, he says he's going to use a blockchain system for Canada that you can opt in and uh, become a New Canada citizen. And you can uh, then... he. The plan, I'm no computer guy, the plan is to divide Canada into 33 million pieces. And everybody gets one piece. Why 33? That's how many people in the country. Oh, I'm sorry. Okay, so that's the population. I yeah, just hear the number 33 Divide it up. Ago. So you will own part of the 401. You will own right. all the infrastructure, all the public oh, buildings. Oh, I see. We'll all be rich. And his plan is uh, you can go to any store and buy milk, bread, cheese, eggs with your thumbprint. And that will be of no charge to you. Now, if you want to buy a giant bottle of 7-Up, that's your own money. Or if you want to buy a case of beer, that's your own money. But the essentials of life, he says, will not be charged. And he can talk to you for hours about this. It's his concept, not mine. And... Um, You'll be hearing more from him in the future. He's, so in, he's in hiding right now. Okay. The RCMP are looking for him desperately. They don't know where he is. The Ottawa police came to my door looking for him. Wow. And they actually tried to push their way into my, my suite. And uh, when I managed to get the door closed and, and slide the deadbolt, uh, the guy said, uh, the woman police officer kicked the door and then the guy said, we'll be back with a tactical squad and a K-9 team. That's how bad they want this guy. I didn't have him. I wasn't harboring him. Now, someone else posted one of his videos on their Facebook page. And within an hour, there were nine RCMP cruisers around his house in Moncton. Oh, my Moncton. goodness. Another guy in Kingston had the police walk into his house he had his door unlocked and said, is uh, so-and-so there? And he said, no. And uh, they said, can we go upstairs and look? And he threw them out and they did go out. But that's Don't you have to have permits? And yeah, you have to right? have a warrant. A warrant, I mean, to get in, yeah. Yeah, well, they're breaking the law. Yeah. And I'm going to hold them to account too. But that's how bad these people want this man. And I'll tell you his, his name off camera. Maybe. <laughs> okay. No. Um, well, it was a pleasure, an absolute pleasure to be here with you today and have this uh, discussion. Like I said, we're going we're gonna to do another one of these if you're willing. As many as you want. And um, I look forward to it. So absolute Thank pleasure. You. Thank you Thank very you. much.